Some people call it Mac bid, others refer to it as Mac discount. In truth, the correct way to pronounce the name is M at C, which stands for merchandise at cost. For the sake of simplification, in this video, I will refer to it as Mac bid. I'm sure your first question is, what the hell is Mac bid anyway? The answer is a bit complicated, but here's a brief description. MacBid is an online auction app that sells anything and everything. The items they list for auction are predominantly open box items and returns from places such as Amazon and Home Depot. Additionally, their inventory also includes some items that are new, which are factory overstock and out of season items. Each item will be categorized with one of three labels, new, open box, and damaged. New items are unopened, undamaged, and should be in the same condition as if on a store shelf. Open box items are pieces of merchandise that have been returned after being unpacked and possibly even used for a short amount of time. Open box items may be missing pieces, so it is important to check these items before bidding on them to ensure that all the necessary components are included. The third and final label that may be used to describe an item is damaged. These products are broken or otherwise non-functional in some way and usually include a short description explaining their deficiencies. Mac bid not only allows, but actually recommends that customers inspect items in person before bidding on them. Their warehouses are located across the southwest region of Pennsylvania, stretching into eastern Ohio. Since last year, they have also opened dozens of new locations nationwide. Before bidding on an item, it is imperative that you take note as to which warehouse the item is currently located. You can filter the items that are visible as well as narrow down the warehouses shown in your searches by toggling off the locations that are inaccessible to you for travel to help facilitate your Mac bid shopping experience and make it easier to find items you may be interested in bidding on. Items that are not especially large can be transferred to other warehouses that are located in the same transfer region. Transfer regions are made up of Mac bid warehouses located in the same general vicinity. For example, the Robinson location is part of transfer region one, along with Monroeville, Butler, and Pittsburgh Mills. Transfers cost $5 per item, unless you have a monthly membership. With a membership, an eligible item can be sent to a warehouse in the same transfer region free of charge. With a monthly membership, you have access to unlimited transfers for free. However, each item can only be transferred once. It can only be transferred if you have not opted to have the item placed on hold. With a monthly membership, you can even select one location in each region to be your designated warehouse to receive automatic transfers which will have the app send any item you win that is transferable to the warehouse of your choice within the same region. A Mac bid membership costs $30 per month, so if you plan on bidding on items often it would benefit you greatly to opt in. Along with free transfers, members also receive free holds on eligible items. Holding an item allows you several additional days to pick it up from the warehouse. Like I stated earlier, however, you cannot transfer an item that has been held, nor vice versa. Also, with a membership, any item that is transferable will automatically be held for free if you have not picked it up yet. Again, this only counts for items that have not been transferred as of yet. Members also receive one free return per month, even for items that you have not elected to purchase insurance. If you do not use this monthly return, it will roll over into the following month, stacking up to five altogether. On the topic of returns, if you opted to purchase insurance for a winning item, you can return the item to the warehouse where you picked it up within five days with no questions asked. Even without opting to purchase an item's insurance, if you win an item and can show that it was labeled wrong on the app, you can return the item free of charge as long as you do not leave the warehouse with it. The same goes for items that are labeled like new that are not in that condition. Now that we have gone over transfers and returns, it's time that I discuss the auctions themselves. The end time for each auction will be different, but in general they end sometime after 6 p.m. Sunday through Thursday. I have seen auctions end outside that time frame, but it is not common. Currently, there do not seem to be any auctions ending on Friday or Saturday, but that may change depending on when you're watching this video. This next part is vital, so please pay special attention. The last two minutes of any auction are the most important and should be watched diligently. This is because any new high bid within the last two minutes resets the auction ending countdown by adding 30 seconds to the countdown clock. For example, if I am currently the high bidder on an item with 30 seconds left and someone new bids an amount higher than my current bid, the auction ending time will then have 30 seconds tacked on, even if they did not surpass my maximum bid. In this particular case, the auction end time after this new bid will now be one minute after the 30 seconds is tacked on. In theory, if people continued bidding higher amounts on an item, the auction could go on forever. 
Make sure to watch any auction you're bidding on until the very end. Otherwise, someone can swoop in and increase the bid, resetting the clock. With this system, however, you'll at least have the opportunity to jump ahead of them again with a new offer of your own. If you win an item, you have three days to pick it up from the warehouse it is currently located. You must pay for any item you win by the following day. After paying for your item, check the hours of operation to ensure the warehouse is open prior to arrival. Some days have extended hours of operation, and members are given additional time before the general public to retrieve their products. When conducting a search, it is important that you use the filter button to narrow down your current search. Here you can set the app to search based upon retail price, current bid price, location, discount, condition, or category. You may also search only for items that are transferable, which is a filter that I personally use quite often in conjunction with my automatic transfer location selections. Next, I will reveal some amazing tips and tricks that have helped me navigate the app and win auctions much more frequently. First, use your watch list to mark any and all items you may be interested in purchasing well in advance of when the auction will end. Your watch list will show the items you have marked in order of their ending time. So having these items marked in advance will allow you to simply stay glued to this area of the app and watch auctions count down, ensuring that you do not miss the opportunity to bid on an item before it ends. Additionally, my kids add items to the watch list frequently as a way of notifying me that they're interested in the item themselves, which is much easier than texting me a photo or description and leaving it up to me to find it myself. The next tip is to use the button labeled Research Product Online to get an idea of what it is you're looking at. Clicking this button will take you to a quick Google search of the item based on the barcode or the description of the item. From here, you can determine whether the item you are viewing is exactly what you're looking for. However, sometimes this product search leads to a dead end. If this happens, my personal go-to for conducting research on items is Google Lens. Just take a screenshot of the page, click Share, and choose Google Lens. It will comb the database for images similar to the one on your screen, and within the first few results, you should find an item that matches your query. I use Google Lens so frequently, I have it pinned to the top for easy access. My next suggestion will help you win auctions at much lower prices, but it requires you to be extremely patient and vigilant. Before setting my sights on an item, especially one that is high in price, I search prior auctions to get an idea of what the price may end up when the auction ends. To do this, I sign in a Mac bid on a desktop browser and navigate to the past auction section. On a desktop browser, scroll to the bottom of Mac bid's default website. When you reach the bottom, the link to view past auctions is in the middle section, in the same row as the link titled More Info. You will be directed to a page listing the most recent auctions organized by location. Just make sure you select a link that would correspond to the item you are researching. For example, if you're searching for something that is extremely large, you would most likely need to search in one of the warehouses labeled B, which are big box locations that specialize in large items, such as refrigerators and washing machines. Once you determine which auction to search, Click the link and you'll find every item sold that day. To find your item in question, use your browser's find and page setting, which is usually located in the hamburger menu at the top right. For Chrome and Edge both, it's about two thirds of the way down the list. When you use this page search, you can search the entire page of auctions for specific words and jump from item to item with the up and down keyboard keys. This should give you a decent idea of how much a specific piece of merchandise should sell for in an auction and help you refrain from overbidding on an item that may go for much less on a different day. Similar to researching past auctions, I also look ahead to future auctions in order to find any specific dates and locations that may show several instances of the same item being up for bid, which is essentially leveraging the law of supply and demand to your advantage. For example, instead of being laser focused on an item that has minimal quantities available today, determine if the quantity is greater a day of two down the line. The greater the inventory, the less pressured other people will be to win that item knowing they have several other chances to win besides that singular auction. Another pro tip is to scan the app with generalized search terms or browse without any search term at all. Things get labeled incorrectly, and on occasion you can find products labeled with an incorrect retail price simply due to human error. If an item is labeled incorrectly, unless someone is browsing randomly, the search mechanism will bury it in the feed and hardly anyone will be able to find it. The next tip I'll offer is how to score items for extremely cheap prices. I often win items for as low as $1, and most of the time, I find these items in the dollar deal section. Also, the later in the day it is, the easier it is to win items for $1. Last week, I was able to win an $80 vacuum for $1.
I could have one several more due to their overstock, but honestly, I do not have enough room to house any more, even for that price. Finding items that are out of season also makes it easy to win auctions for practically nothing. For instance, portable air conditioners that cost upwards of $700 were going for around $20 or $30 in September and October. I managed to win an LG portable air conditioner for $20. Bucks. Look for Halloween costumes for next year in November, Christmas decorations in January, etc. MacBid offers everyday items as well, although not as frequently as some other products. I managed to find an 80-pack of Pete's K cups for $15 last week. Specific products that are niche may end up selling for extremely low prices as well. I purchased two MIMO 2 by antennas for $20 and $30 respectively. That concludes my in-depth guide to everything MacBid. If you have any questions, feel free to comment or message me. I don't know everything about the app, but I will try to help you in any way I can.